follow the order of service on page 167. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. We confess and we are Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We continue with singing the psalm as printed in the bulletin. Uh, note that the psalm begins with an antiphon and then the vicar will sing the following passage too. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. We continue with the Kyrie as printed on page 168. Mm -hmm. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. This holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. on page 172. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday is from Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set my pr- your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, the, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. This is the word of our Lord. The epistle is from Philippians, chapter 2. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeliness of man. And being made in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on the earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. 
His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason the people also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign. Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Because the rite of confirmation will follow the sermon, we'll confess the Nicene Creed on page 174 now. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty,
grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our text this morning comes from the Gospel lesson, verses 14 and 15. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. There ends the text. Dear fellow redeemed, everything has a purpose in God's hands. Palm Sunday, too, every element of the story of Palm Sunday has a purpose in God's hands. The people swarming around Jesus when he was entering Jerusalem. They serve as God's mouthpieces, announcing who Jesus was and what he came to do. He was the king of Israel. He was the son of David. He was coming in the name of the Lord to do the Lord's work of salvation. The palm leaves that they threw down in front of Jesus in the colt, they serve a purpose. They're there to emphasize Jesus' role as victor. It's what they used to throw before conquering generals. He was the one coming to conquer the worst enemy of humanity, sin, death, evil. The Pharisees, even they serve a purpose in this story. We see them mumbling off in the shadows about Jesus and how the world's following after him. They serve to show us how evil can take hold of a human heart, how pride can blind one to the nature of Christ and his work. Every element of the story has a purpose. And even this donkey Jesus is sitting on has a purpose. G.K. Chesterton wrote a poem, in fact, entitled The Donkey, which is about this donkey on Palm Sunday. don't usually read poetry, but it's short. Second verse of the poem goes like this. With monstrous head and sickening cry and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody of all four-footed things. That's what the donkey is like. With its monstrous head, it is not a handsome animal. With its tortured braying that's hard on the ears. With its reputation for stubbornness, its ears that seem too big for its head, its lack of intelligence. Even that donkey has a purpose in the story. I think its purpose is to show us the power of Christ over beings that are so miserably undesirable. This is a colt that's never been ridden, so it wasn't broken, it wasn't ready for riders yet, and yet under Jesus it doesn't fight or buck. Though it's a stubborn beast by nature, it dutifully obeys Jesus and goes where he wants. Though it's a creature destined to live with its hooves in dirt and manure, on this day it walks on a carpet of greenery and cloth. This difficult creature, this monstrous animal with all its problems, is transformed by its association with Jesus on this day. When I look at the donkey and look for a purpose for the donkey, I can't help but see something of myself. A being filled with so many undesirable things, a creature of sin and corruption, with monstrous failings, suited in many regards more for an eternal jail cell than for a mansion in heaven. But despite what I am by nature, Jesus is able to transform even me into something more. He did. He joined himself to me in holy baptism. He put his truth in my mind. He put his word on my tongue. He atoned for my monstrous failures and placed his Holy Spirit within a being like me. He took me from being a child of hell to being a citizen of heaven. He transformed me by an act of sheer, undeserved grace. He did it because, as God's word says elsewhere, Jesus chooses the weak things of the earth and the despised things and the things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are. See, everything this world holds as precious and important are ultimately rejected by this Savior. All the things we heap up for ourselves and put in bank accounts meant nothing to him. 
He chose what no one else would choose. He chose a donkey instead of a conquering steed. He chose me and he chose you instead of the best and the brightest or the smartest or the most pious. Jesus chose to love the undesirable and sinful of whom I am chief. In choosing us as his own, God put a dignity within us that we do not have by nature. Despite the monstrous failings all of us bring into God's church, Jesus showers us with the love of God, with the remission of all of our sins. He shapes us into his own dear children whom he loves with such intensity and fervor that he would actually let his son die in our place. We are the beloved of God, despite what we are by nature, despite our sins. We are his temple, his handiwork, his Israel, his own special people purchased with the life of Jesus. So we're donkeys no more. Now we are sons and daughters of God, because Jesus transformed even us by grace. That little donkey on Palm Sunday, I think he's got lessons for the compromands to remember today, too. He had his day of glory, riding into Jerusalem as a horse under a conquering general. But after this day, he went back to his owner, back to life on the farm. He went from walking on a carpet before cheering crowds to being alone in a field with his feet in the mud. Today's your day of glory. Your family's around you. Your church is here today to welcome you to the communion rail. Today, we say that you have matured to the point that you understand God's word and can be responsible when it comes to receiving the Lord's Supper. You know what the Lord's Supper is. You know what it does. You know how your life should be shaped as a Christian around God's word and sacrament. No doubt today you're going to be congratulated by a lot of people. But tomorrow, it's life as usual. Starting tomorrow, there's not going to be any more pats on the back when you do the right thing. You're not going to get certificates or gifts for being a faithful Christian. Tomorrow, you resume life with its normal frustrations and disappointments, with its moments of feeling like you're all alone. You're going to go back to your normal life with one difference. You will have the body and blood of Christ within you. And that body and blood of Christ within you is not just a thing. It is a divine power that lives in you. You can go back to your normal, everyday lives living differently than the rest of the world around you that does not know Christ. Your life as a redeemed child of God is going to be difficult. There are going to be a lot of temptations in front of you. You'll fall at times. And the world won't receive you nicely. You'll be made to feel alone. You might be fun of for not joining the crowd when they want to do things contrary to God's will. You'll even have people tell you you're corrupt and evil because of the faith you confess. Besides that, you're all going to have times when you disappoint yourselves when you give in to that sin and that temptation that you know you shouldn't. So life is going to be hard. But you will face it with the body and blood of Christ joined to you. Which means you will face it with the Savior himself living within you, with God's Spirit firmly inside of you, going with you, facing whatever you face with you. Jesus' own victory over the devil and this evil world is part of you. And even when you have those moments of feeling all alone, Jesus is going to be right there at your side, speaking his word to you, reminding you he will not let you go and will never abandon you. And when others around you follow falseness and sin, you will have Christ within you, giving you strength and faith, 
so that you might resist that temptation and remain firm in the life he gives you. you know, the older you get, the more you're going to watch other people ruin their lives by turning themselves over to this world and its ways. But now you have a place where you can come and receive the very body and blood of Christ to strengthen you against that. You can come here, and you can go there to the communion rail and receive all the blessings that Jesus died to give you. Eternal life, faith, strength for holier living, forgiveness for failings. So you don't need the glory of this day to last. You need the gifts of forgiveness and eternal life to last. And those gifts do last. And Christ has this day placed them in their fullness before you. Receive them as often as you need, which is constantly. So it's a transformative power of God's grace that can turn even a donkey into a noble creature. It can turn all of us into creatures of God's love and mercy. That's God's gift to us and to you, our compromise. Thanks be to Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Congregation is invited to follow the rite of confirmation on page 272. <clears throat> Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized, 
and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from the scriptures, as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teachings of our Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Alexis. Alexis Lee Bradshaw, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Alexis, your confirmation verse is Psalm 86, verses 11 to 12. Teach me your way, O Lord, I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Jacob Lee Brown, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Jacob, your confirmation verse is Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Marissa Catherine Hansen, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Marissa, your confirmation verse is Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Simon Hayes Fiscus, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, 
and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Simon, your verse is Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Lauren Elizabeth Reese, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Lauren, your verses, Isaiah 43, 1. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Lindsay Anna Reese, the Almighty God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Lindsay, your verse is Psalm 100, verse 5. The Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. The congregation may rise. We continue with the prayer of the church, which will be the litany sung between the vicar and the choir. Redeemer of the world. Have 
assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners do be and to rule and govern your holy church, to preserve all pastors of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your word and in holiness of living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all such as have her erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, to accompany your word with your spirit and grace, to raise up those that fall and to strengthen such as do stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. To give to all nations peace and concord, to preserve our country from discord and contention, to give to our nation perpetual victory over all its enemies, to direct and defend the president and all in authority, and to bless and keep all our magistrates and our people. We beseech thee to to behold and secure all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect all who travel, to protect all women in the perils of childbirth, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to set free all who are innocently imprisoned, to defend and provide for the fatherless, children, and widows, and to have mercy upon all people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve to our use the fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. O Lord, 
Jesus Christ, Son of God. We beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, God that takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. O Christ.
any visitors here this morning, I would invite you please to review the communion policy as printed in the bulletin. Those who are members of fellow Missouri Synod congregations in good standing are invited to commune with us. Those who are not, we would ask please to refrain from communion at this time. We continue then with the service of the sacrament. It's printed on page 177. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <coughs> Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Thank you.